everybody, and welcome to the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. We are here live at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington, for the second year running of this tournament. Here is David Burney in the booth with you, alongside with Christian Younger, a man of many talents. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And he's got some new toys in there, and uh, we're just getting the details ironed out, and we'll be... Uh, Starting the action uh, pretty soon with a great match to kick us off here at the second uh, running of this tournament with On Yi against Jack uh, Both players from Hong Kong, very strong players. Obviously, On Yi, a three times world women's champion, and uh, really wants to dig in and put a good result this weekend because he definitely wants to get back onto that pro tour. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. And uh, Wine Cellars, our headline sponsor. We got a short little video. We can, maybe we can. Show it off to the folks. video there makes me a little bit thirsty for some uh, vino. Oh, definitely, definitely. Thank MindSellers.com for all their great help with getting this tournament off the ground for the second year. And uh, just about to get started here on table one. And Dave Daly will be the man in charge of the table doing some referee work as well. We also have Vanit Desani all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, doing some rover refereeing. And so it's a, a great feeling in the room. Things getting started. Okay. A lot of hopes. Hi. And, uh, we will reign supreme. We do have Jamie Hunter, last year's tournament winner. Defending champion, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, lots of great players. Mink Nutcherok is here. Bex Kenner. Diana Schuler. So um, it's going to be a great weekend to snooker. And we're glad you're joining in wherever you're tuning in from. Feel free to give us... Uh, a like, a subscribe, all that good stuff. Any comments or questions, let us know where you're tuning in. You know, we've got some good uh, fellow uh, follows here that have come back. Chuck Jones all the way over there in Motor City. Always good to hear you tuning in. Uh, looks like Mike Garrett as well is tuning in, so looking pretty good. I think the coins are going to be flipped, and we'll get frame one underway. They will be playing all three frames in this. It's not a best of three. So uh, all frames really count. You know, that one frame, as much as you might be down 2 nothing in a match, if you get that one frame to make it 2-1, could be very helpful and beneficial for you to maybe get that edge to get into the knockout round. So, All right, coin toss is done. I think on you to break, I believe. Got our handy-dandy nifty little scoreboard here. Looking good, looking good. Oh, we got Raymond Fung in the chat. All the best, saying. Uh, good to hear from you, Raymond. Looking forward to seeing you down at the U.S. Nationals at the end of this month. He was last year's runner-up. So great to see lots of great uh, snooker action in North America, I think, as we're kind of uh, winding down in the summer months. It's going to get a little cooler, a little uh, poorer weather outside. So uh, we're going to see a lot more snooker action as people are going to migrate indoors. And... Uh, battle at this great game. So on you to break off in frame one. Here we go. And so it has begun. Oh, first break off. Pretty, pretty TV-esque break off, I'd say. I think she's got a really nice snooker now. I don't know if anything's on, actually. And the run back to bulk is looking very tricky. Uh, hello there up in Canada to Snooker Canada. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm. We'll pass along all your good wishes to all the players. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes when you have a good break off shop, she's left a tough red to the middle, but I think Anyu's is going to elect to play safe here. Slowly those reds will get dislodged. And yeah, Anyu has definitely quite the resume. She was on the pro tour. So she's fighting hard to get back there. As I said in the opening, she is three times women's world champion, three times women's masters champion, and four times UK women champ. So definitely she knows what to do when she gets to the table. Jack A has had some success a few years back. She's took a little break from the game but has come back and played quite strong and is actually ranked 30th in the world on the women's side. Wow, look at that pot. That shows confidence and the uh, right angle on the blue to get into the red, so let's see what Anyi can do with this. So much so much more fun watching the, the pros in person, especially when you can see the acceleration they put on the ball. Six. But for some reason, TV doesn't do it right for me. I don't know why. But when, when you see the, the stroke live in person, when you saw the Luca Purcell uh, exhibition last weekend, it, it's just it's a different, different understanding. I don't know what it is. It's true as well, like just how softly they shoot. Yeah, yeah. It's not about speed, right? No, it's really control. And Well, these tables are in fantastic condition. All you guys here at Ox have just really stepped up your game, and we have world-class conditions with these star tables. Me with a chance here, and she's looking pretty good. Taking this bottom red out of the bunch, I think. Next, float forward, opens up a few more reds. Yeah, she can just keep her composure. I'd almost say that this probably frame is hers. Like there's, I mean, we've seen her. We've seen her clear up from here for sure. Mm -hmm. It's really this. This once she clears this red, that's kind of just to the left of the pack on its own. Everything else kind of opens up quite nicely, I'd say. Yeah, played for that one. Oh, did she cluster them though? She might have to go into the pack one more time. Twenty-two. True. Sure, probably gonna just use a the cushion here to come on to the black, or maybe actually a pink into the side. Actually. Yeah, pink in the middle is nice because then she might be able to set up for one of these reds, especially if it's on. But I don't know. It's a natural way, I guess, also to kind of split them. If she can run off of some of the reds and play for the pink again. Depends on the angle, really. Good to hear that Keith Butler is turning in all the way from Birmingham, England. And hello to David Press. Thanks for turning in, guys. And sometimes we get carried away because we're such uh, fluent in the game, Christian and I, that we forget that sometimes we have some new fans there. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask us, you know, even if it's a simple one, like how much that black is worth, we know that's seven points, and you'll see these players wanting to hang around that ball a lot, because that's where you can really make a dent into the scorecard. black. She can see a little bit of the pocket in the corner of her eye. So it's just a little bit more tricky, just needs a little extra care. Fantastic shot. I was actually talking to Mike, or not Mike, Matt Hewart who is one of the tournament directors, along with Diana Schuler, this great event. 
because he paid us a visit in Canada before he came down here. And he was telling me that uh, Onyi is uh, very disciplined. When they arrived here, they would come into the room and do six hours of practice each day leading up. So Onyi is definitely really focused. That black one a little bit out of position. Putting her on to a long red, and unfortunately she wasn't able to make it there. So let's see what Jackie can do with this opportunity. Is her first real chance right at the table? Is this green on? It's actually sorry, she's on a red, right? Um, red to the middle. It's going to be kind of a risky shot. She's probably going to play safe behind the yellow, I imagine. Yeah, maybe just taking this red to the top right corner. Maybe go for the draw. plant. Ooh. A little first frame nerves maybe with that little jump shot, but completely legal. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously jump shots are not uh, a preferred choice in this game. Actually, they are fouls if you don't hit, but uh, that little pop up there, but it still hit the red, so it was okay. Mm, excellent nice shot, sorry. No, oh, good, good. Excellent thought. Onyi and Jackie, they're, they're great friends, both coming to us from Hong Kong. But when you're on the table, there's no friends. <laughs> You've just got to be ruthless, <laughs> cutthroat, and playing for the victory if you want to host the trophy come Sunday night. Mm, Ramil in the chat. How's it going, Ramil? Saying, uh, come on, Hong Kong. Yeah, this is actually the uh, Hong Kong group, right? That's correct. Yeah, Francis Chow, who lives here in Seattle. Was he originally from Hong Kong? Uh, from yeah, yeah, yes. she's originally from Hong Kong. Okay. Yep. So yeah. I think Ramil has a safe bet there if you're a betting person. You know, if you want to bet on Hong Kong winning this <laughs> match, you should be okay. I think you should be fine, yeah. Even winning the group, I think, because it's the three of them, and I think we only had one one drop uh, in the tournament, so that, that group is now three players large, all from Hong Kong. Quite interesting. And all very strong players. Definitely Anya and Jackie, but Francis is getting there, and... Uh, you know, I remember coming down here for one of my first tournaments, the Seattle Open, and Frances was in it, finding her way, but she's really improved and really grabbed this game by the threshold, so it's nice to see. Unfortunately, that pink has left an, Miss Pink has left an open red for Jackie, so let's see if she can uh, get back into this first frame. So... First real chance for her, really, in this frame, right? Because the last pot into the middle or playing safe was going to be awfully tough. Definitely enough points to catch up in this as well. In with a chance, as I might say. Yes, Chuck, I must say uh, Christian and I both actually were over at the Crucible this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are a fan of snooker, there's no other place in the world to be. It is pretty much Nirvana over there come late April, early May. Lots of great snooker, lots of great uh, snooker fans that you can uh, mingle with from throughout the world. So I say uh, put it on your list, save up those pennies. And I know one little trick some people like sometimes look on the websites and like, oh, there's uh, all the tickets are sold out. But uh, they have to wonder that sometimes this thing happens over there, that players or people buy a lot of tickets, and then you know maybe they're watching, and Ronnie O'Sullivan unfortunately doesn't make it to a next round, so they kind of <laughs> resell their tickets. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tickets that do become available. That was a fortunate, I guess, uh, thing that we we saw. We ended up getting a, a match for, I believe, the final. Uh, we ended up getting into into the room for the uh, Mark Selby one four seven. 
against Luca Brasil. Wow, you lucky dog. Yeah, we amazing. We were just watching it in the press room. <laughs> Actually, the great Michael McMullen from uh, Ireland. It was about, I think there were two reds that had gone down and two blacks. And Michael's like, I think the 147 is on. And sure mm -hmm. enough, uh, Mark Selby did that for the very first 147 in a world championship final. Yeah, incredible stuff. Nice rest shot there by Anyi. But can't take anything away from Canada's own Cliff Thorburn with the first 147 at the Crucible Theatre. So on you with a 56 point advantage and there's 65 on the table. Or 67, my apologies. More reds and colors to seal the frame here. frame now. There's one snooker required. So I think this is going to be the first frame. For Anyi, she has a 77 22. to 7 advantage. Wow, what a pot there. Tight middle pockets here at Ox as well. believe this isn't in the group stage there is a rule as well that they're going to be playing to a certain uh, lead right I believe so I believe I think maybe when they get down to the colors if three four point or more mm -hmm. snookers are required then it's a concession yep. uh, just not a bad ruling not a bad ruling in the amateur world as well just to kind of keep things going and kind of teaching the new players that uh, the sportsmanship kind of is to you know, when you're down so much, there's a point of concession. So, so on you take that first range. She's got uh, two more. She can put two more. That will really be a, a good first step to hoisting the trophy Sunday night. Definitely after uh, this match concludes, we're going to have a great one afterwards as well with Mink Nacharat against uh, Seattle's very own Marissa Du. There's another mm -hmm. young and up-and-coming player. Young and up-and-coming player. There we go. It's going to be a good one. I know that for sure. Good, good opportunity for Marissa also to learn from one of the best in the world. And I think we're getting ready. Frame two action, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just watching uh, some of the players uh, that are local here, just practicing, their, their play is that much better than it was last year. So definitely having these more higher ranked players uh, that play pretty much in all the tournaments coming over, really it's infectious of what happens. So. And we are as well trying to in North America get more of the female and male professionals to come over so hopefully our uh, players over here on this side of the pond can uh, get inspired and uh, watch actually how Christian and I were talking about how, how gently really these players hit the ball it's not really you think you know you want to power it through 
that will give you more action, but it's just making the right contact at the right point with a great follow through. Yes, Chuck, I, I'm definitely uh, aware that uh, the governing body over there, World Snooker, is uh, ticking an eye over here on North America. They definitely, you know, in Canada there was a rich history with the likes of Cliff Thorburn, 1980, world champion, uh, Kirk Season, Stevens famously with that white uh, suit when he made a 147, and who could forget Big Bill Werbeneck, who pretty much drank Canada dry, was... Uh, <laughs> is a thing that's actually, I think, a documentary in the works about Bill, and that's aptly titled The Man Who Drank Canada to Dry because he was not afraid of any logger that was in front of him. A nice safety shot there by Onyi to combat the break-off by Jack A. Casey here. This red might leak out. It's going to leave a shot. Yeah, pot is on, I think, for this red. Left corner pocket. There's a nice shot of Dave Daly, a referee there in the back. <laughs> Doing the good work. Nice little drag shot to hold for that black. Excellent speed. And there's a few open reds that you can start chipping away with this black, so. This is kind of where the, the difference sort of happens between the pro and the amateurs. When the pro gets into the, the balls, they really punish you. Mm-hmm. Hey Carl, good to hear from you. He runs the Rochester Snooker Academy, or no, it's in the pocket. In the pocket, thank yeah. you. It's in Rochester, Washington. In the pocket Snooker Academy. Carl Hancock in the Facebook chat saying hello. It says say hi to Peter Kwan for me. He played some snooker last night at the club. On his way up to the tournament. Sounds good. We'll have to say hello. A little bit of hampered queuing on this red. Tough spot here, I think. Yeah, she, she might. This is an element of safety taking this uh, red into the left top corner pocket and running up to bulk. Yeah, 147 was on. And we all like to see that, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, there it was not not going to be easy from that position after that black. Just came a little bit, a little bit short, I think. I think Mike uh, is trying to bait us into the commentator curse. You know, we're not <laughs> supposed to be mentioning these numbers until such we get to the end. Such high numbers. Mm -hmm. So they are playing three full frames, right? So I believe it's not just the best right. of three, but it is an entire three full frames for this group stage. A little bit different format than last year, but I guess uh, having this day, this be a three-day event instead of a just a two-day event helps give us more time to play a full group knockout stage. Was it two days last year? I thought it was. There three. might have been three. Yeah, actually, I don't know. If it was three. Yeah, if it was three, then yeah, makes a lot of sense. We'll just have to see what our statisticians say in the chat room. Look wow. at that pot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think this black is on. It looks awfully tight. It's tough from this angle on the mm, screen. I, oh man, I don't know. I'd say I I delegate to yes. You know, just these camera angles can be deceiving. So when in doubt, I always feel like the answer is yes. Dave Daly looking in just to make sure. Foul here. When in doubt, I trust the player. <laughs> they have the <laughs> best uh, yeah. 
best sight on it. Simon Barker in the Facebook chat saying hello, hello. Great venue, great owner. Host Mike Dominguez promoting Snooker in the U.S. and great commentator David Burney here in the booth. Thank you very much, Simon. You make me blush, and now it's my turn because, uh, ooh, missed the black there. Yeah, so it wasn't on. So I think we're going to get a respot most likely here. Like, there are table mechanics, and then there are Simon Barker, that's for sure. The man is a miracle worker. Uh, check out his uh, website. Uh, Simon, feel free to put a link up on the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, does, there's a great, uh, great video of Simon up there of his that doing his handiwork of there. just uh, replacing and getting a little bit of the thread that was uh, forcing a cue ball to make some funny direction. Dave kind of was looking a little bit our way to just see about uh, respawning that red. It looks pretty close to me, actually, based on our video view. Yeah, it looks pretty dead on, I'd say. Mm, just done it again. Oh, it just barely went past. Yeah, we'll have to tell Dave we're kind of sometimes busy uh, <laughs> describing material that uh, sometimes finding where balls are is... Uh, or referee job, right? right? Just thank you for a second. So it's two. This is the second miss. But it's all working together to create a great experience and a fair experience for all players. Okay. So I think Dave wants to just double check with us. Yeah, it looks good to me, I think. Oh, did catch the black that time. Just barely. So, Javier, this uh, it's a round robin for today and a little bit into tomorrow. And uh, there's uh, four players in each group. And they're playing all frames, so it's not like a, a best. As a, we have the best of three marker on the score sheet. There, they will play all three frames. As you know, even though you lose maybe two one, that one frame really might help you out to get into the knockout round that starts tomorrow afternoon. But if you win a match three nothing, it's a, a good idea, good mantra to have. Oh, just caught that point of that draw. Just leave a shot on. Yep, pot is on. If not the red, closest to the middle pocket. One just below the pink. That should be a, a good shot to get onto the blue. And great to hear from our good friend Stephen Wong, last year's U.S. national champion. And we'll be all descending down to Embassy Billiards. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. U.S. nationals. Coming up in uh, September 1st through 4th. I hear Dave Bernie's going to be in the booth for that one too. It's going to be a good one. True, and I believe Christian Youngers is going to be helping out doing all his tech and gidgetry. Yeah, so, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of stuff in the background. No big deal. Hope you guys all like what we do because uh, we're happy to be here and definitely looking forward to be in La La Land as the U.S. Nationals goes Hollywood. Mm hmm. Oh, David Brock over in the YouTube chat. Hello, hello, David Brock. Past, uh, I believe, runner-up. Seattle Snooker Open runner-up uh, Yes, two years ago. The Is that right? Believe, oh, he m might have been third, oh, third. place. Yeah, third I, place. I think it was that's CCU right. and uh, Varun Junajay. Yeah, that's right. They had a they had doubleheader matchup uh, again. That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, CC won the first Seattle Snooker Open back in 2022. And then it was a rematch this past March for CC and Varun. And Varun was victorious this time in a nail-biting decider 5-4. So, Yeah, he's got it third place. Yep. All right. Good chance. Here with a few reds to pick off. Unfortunately, this frame does look like it's going to become a grinder once you get to these reds on the left part of the table. But at least a chance to score some points. Put some pressure on uh, on Anyi. It's really nice to see as well some of these more higher rank players. Okay. If you really see a really pronounced delay in their backswing. Mm -hmm. Definitely when we come to our next match with Mink, she really holds it back there. You pretty much feel like you could read a book. She <laughs> leaves it so long in the backswing and then delivers a perfect strike yeah. through the cue ball. Yeah, it's all about that transition. Especially in the game of snooker, you see a lot more of the pause at the back um, just to help with that smoothness of stroke and transition from backwards to forwards motion. Um, obviously, when you come to the pool world and other cue sports, a little bit quicker transitions are there. Um, but then again, sometimes you need a little bit more more spice and everything nice into the cue ball and maybe not as much accuracy. So I think that's kind of the trade-off you take there. This isn't too bad, this black, for a right-hander. Uh, she's a left-hander. These reds would be a little bit of a nuisance. Chuck's saying he wants to maybe come for one of the uh, USSA events in the future. Do keep an ear out. I think uh, there are plans to be hosting some other events aside from just the U.S. Nationals. Uh, maybe rumors of a possible U.S. Open. We shall see, though. Um, not exactly sure what, uh, what the USSA has in store. But uh, hopefully growing the sport, getting more events out there will be awesome for us Americans over here. You know what I like about an open event? Anybody can join it. Exactly. We can get some Canadians, some yeah. Mexicans, some Let's Guatemalans, some Brazilians. Present North America. We might even get some Europeans to come mm -hmm. over the water. Oh, Chris Robbins in the chat also. Saying, always so impressed with everything that comes out of Ox Billiards. Thanks for the beautiful stream and great commentary. Thank you, Chris. Shout out to her. Ex-Team Oregon player for the Northwest Cup pool player. Really strong. Always at all the uh, Western BCA events. And there might have been a foul there because I think she hit the rest with the blue. No, the the, the red came around and hit the oh, rest. Did, yeah, oh. yeah. Okay. It was a little bit close, very difficult to see, but came two cushion, three, yeah, two cushions around. Yeah. Bit of an awkward rest shot as well, but left her with hampered queuing. spot to get behind. Mm -hmm. This is looking like that's what she's aiming for. It's going to be a little bit short, though. Getting behind the green would have been the bonus, but at least she's on the, the good side of the bulk line. Mm -hmm. Jack K, quite a long shot. I imagine trying to cut this red to the left corner pocket. That way you can escape. Maybe a shot to nothing, but you might have to leave it if you hit it soft enough. So... Prioritizing, obviously, the safety behind brown, yellow, green. She might make this pot, but really she's playing the safety here. Gonna get behind blue, it looks like, for most of the pack. And I think there's an edge of this red below the black. It is an escape as well. Gonna be trying to, trying to do the same kind of safety once again. How's the line? Just tapped into the yellow. Very close to being maybe a little bit dangerous there for for Jackie. Get some folks. Uh, David Broadcasting did Mary Vina was pulled out. Yeah, fortunately she had to uh, cancel. So she would have been in this group. 
on the this now I guess it was it was Hong Kong plus one American, but now it's a full Hong Kong trifecta. But uh, with yep. Francis Cho and these two. But Mary was here last year. Um, predominantly a uh, pool player, mm -hmm. but uh, she definitely was willing to give uh, snooker a try last year. She enjoyed her experience. But, uh, as things happen in life, things come up. So uh, we wish Mary all the best. We're missing her. If she's tuning in, but hopefully we can see her again next year. Defending champion Jamie Hunter has taken the first frame over a Marion pool. Uh, just looking at some other matches in the room, and they're still in their first frame. So, mm, nice little dump shot here on this safety. I believe this red might be close to touching, but I don't think touching ball has been awarded, so it must just be really close. It wasn't really anywhere else to play safe there so I think the dump shot is the right call we might see might see this cue ball being left on the on the top cushion here maybe under the black realistically as long as you cover this red by the pink I think is really the only aggressive shot that can be on so nope oh, stopped it to play a little tap shot okay has left on ye this red below the pink to the right yeah, middle that is the only concern there yeah, looking at that last shot that Jack A had, s safety seemed very tricky, so I think just, yeah, and he's going to run back to bulk. Ooh, the line's going to be a little bit off. You need to hit that a little bit more angle there, unfortunately. Mm hmm. Pot is on. Just hampered queuing here. Yeah, I think there's a little passageway possibly. So you can get around the black maybe. Yep, mm. got around the black but hit it a little bit thick. Awfully uh -huh. thin red now into this middle pocket. Mm -hmm. What do you like here? I almost like maybe take if if it can get past those two reds into the top uh, right, but no, she's going for that thin cut that you described, Christian, and did it wonderfully. Mm -hmm. It's still a messy little table here. You know, that red is open below the pink. Red on the right cushion, and then the one on the top cushion. It's gonna uh, come up with some good shot making here, on Yi. Nice screw shot there. Can actually over screw it a bit. I think she was trying to play for the red below the pink. I think so. Yeah, she she definitely had her weedies this morning. She really got into that. Yeah. Chris Robinson watched her play all last year. The vest required dress code. Uh, I believe yes, uh, waistcoat is required for this event. So that being uh, dress shirt, slacks, and uh, vest. You call them slacks too. I thought you were a yeah. younger guy. I thought slacks was like an dress old person pants term. What? <laughs> what, do, what do you call them? Dress pants? I call them dress pants. Oh, okay. Yeah, that works too. Dress pants. I feel dress like pants, dress shoes, waistcoat. A lot of people that collect like old age pension call them slacks. <laughs> I guess it's a bit more colloquial, the word slacks, no? It sounds, it sounds a bit like you're slacking. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, the dress code is definitely part of the culture uh, mm -hmm. with snooker. Like, you, know, you look at a golfer; they have to wear a polo shirt and khaki pants. Uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you have a uniform when you play hockey, or a football jersey when you play football, or that's American football. Even yeah, um, English football that over in North America we call it soccer. Uh, sorry for making us here. those English fans cringe by saying the S word. Excellent shot here, though. From is it pronounced Jackie? Okay. Need to ask her. Eight one. 
Yeah, as I understand, it's kind of like Jack Hay, that uh, mm -hmm. old uh, sitcom actor, I think from old 227. Gotcha. But, uh, this is the first time I've met Jack Hay. Uh, so it's with no disrespect, we do are trying to pronounce you the best. And it looks like Jocelyn has taken a one nothing lead in her match. She's on that back top left corner of your screen right there with uh, Vinit racking the balls. Tough red here. It's a big pot. Wow, excellent shot. Just a bit short of pace, but a great pot. Those are awfully tricky on these tables. Extremely tight corner pockets. But uh, the new felt helps a little bit, the new cloth. Helps them slide in just a little bit more, but uh, give them another two or three weeks, I think, and uh, they're going to be even tighter. Yeah, and I think this is just the first match of the tournament. Uh, with them playing more and more, they'll get a feeling, and, you know, as we saw, Jack Hayde not screw back enough for the pink, and then on Yi overscrewed for the pink. Those corrections will ma be made quite quickly in these players' minds, and... Uh, They'll be fighting all weekend. There's a lot of good ranking points up there. And uh, unfortunately with uh, Rianne Evans, who's uh, number one in the world, uh, didn't come over for this tournament. So uh, there's potential to see a new number one ranked player. Yeah, these are official ranking points from what I understand, right? Mm-hmm. Don't think it's as maybe as much as a, as a big event like the UK Open or, or anything, for example. But... Uh, Still ranking points are ranking points, so good opportunity here. And but very important for the growth of the game, as this is World Women's Snooker. Um, just for the game to keep growing, they need to come out to these different markets. I think talking to Matt Hewitt, he was telling me that last year they had nine tournaments in five continents. Wow, that's so that impressive, yeah. Australia was one I heard, and I think was there something in Thailand? Thailand, uh, obviously North America, where we were last year, mm -hmm. and then obviously Britain. So I don't think you can get onto all continents because a snooker match in Antarctica would be uh, a pretty tricky thing, that's for sure. But it could be fun. Maybe we could go to Antarctica someday and okay. commentate down there. <laughs> I imagine they they play with uh, clear or or the light blue bays maybe there. Just a table <laughs> with uh, ice on it maybe. That's about it. Let's talk about frictionless. Can you imagine playing on ice? It would be quite fun, I imagine. As long as it rolls true, we'd be okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Appreciate it, Mike Garrett over YouTube chat saying we're Ox here in Seattle starting to get some global recognition. We're here for the love of the sport, trying to grow it. And I think that is that the second time she's been hampered on that yellow. A bit unfortunate, mm -hmm. but good safety play from On Yi to force a few misses, but. Uh, Tough, tough bot there, and I think she's actually covered it. Looks awfully close. Can we see from this angle? I think I think the pot is on, but it's awfully thin. Taking a second look. Yeah, I think she needs to like go down by that red, have a little talk, and maybe the echo can come back to the, the cue ball because that is a long distance right here. I'd say that's almost about. Uh, but those reds might be in the way. That's it. There's a long red by that pocket, so she doesn't want to leave it on for Anyi. So good safety shot is needed here. Hopefully, can get behind that yellow. Mm, looks like it's gonna run into something. Nope, I think the pot is on. Yeah. This oh, actually, that red kind of squirted out a bit. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can she get by? It's covered. It's definitely covered. The bottom red. But uh, that red being there makes the pocket play a much larger. So any red that kind of goes 
And that area can definitely go in off. She might go offensively here. She put put her in a pretty tough spot, I'd say. Big pot for this frame. There it is. Big pocket, nice little rub off that red to stay for the black. It's going to be a bit hampered. Yeah, unfortunate actually to get that hampered on this ball because that was quite the shot. Good to hear our friends are tuning in from South Carolina. Always great to see where everyone's tuning in from. You know, it's a global game, so we have friends all over this great world. This is world-class snooker, too. These are, <coughs> what, four? We said four of the top five players right now in the ranking tour. Never thought I'd ever see that. Incredible. Yeah, Anyi is ranked uh, third in the world in the women's, and Mink is Hi. ranked number two in the women's side, ranked 100 on the pro tour. And Bex Kenna, who's sponsored by Ox, she's number four ranked on the women's side and has her pro card and has a ranking of 125. So she's a bit down the list there. I'm pretty sure she's a strong player and she'll climb higher there. And last year's champion, Jamie Hunter, is ranked fifth in the world on the women's side. So the caliber is there. And there's a lot of great local players that have come. And actually, we had Marianne McConnell, who will be coming up on the, the TV table I think tomorrow. I'm down from Canada. She actually was the 1984 world championship runner-up to Mandy Fisher. So it's great to see Marianne back at the table. Great to see uh, some Canadian influence. Hopefully so we can get some more Canadians come down. If you're wanting to find any of the results in this great tournament, feel free to go over to snookerscores.net and just search out the U.S. Women's Snooker Open. And you can find all the scores, the brackets, really up there, um, the group stagings that will lead into the brackets. Right now we're just uh, in the first batch of matches here. It's day one of the winesellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open 2023 live at Ox Billiards in the Emerald City of Seattle, Washington. It's David Burney in the booth with Christian Youngers. I think there's going to be some other guests sprinkled out throughout the weekend. This is a great opening match here between two great Hong Kong players with An Yi and Jack Hay. And our referee, Dave Daly, is keeping everyone in check. <coughs> yeah, great good cue ball, I agree. Control. Nice little safety here. So putting the pressure back on. Chalkbox Productions, local pool live stream over here, asking if there is a rating system in Snooker similar to Fargo rate like there is in pool. Um, there is not currently an... Uh, uh, I guess you would call it like an ELO-based uh, rating system that's relative ranking. They do have an official ranking in the Pro Tour, but obviously that's like world ranking, kind of like how you would see in other pro events and <coughs> some amount of points for place or prize money, etc. is usually how it goes, and I think you can check that out on, on the World Women's uh, Snooker website to see kind of all the current rankings, but every player in this tournament is going to gain a ranking uh, spot, I believe. <coughs> So, great to hear. It might tempt maybe uh, some of these Americans or the mm -hmm. Canadian player maybe take a trip down under and go to the Australian Open. This looks nice. 
Oh yeah. Very Excellent nice play on you. So referee daily just taking a good look. Just in case he needs to come back and respot. As in the round robin, there are two putbacks, so three attempts. But when we get into uh, the knockout phase, it's uh, where the real cruelness of this game can come back up. So it'll be all unlimited uh, putbacks until we're into a Snickers required stage. It's oh nice. Um, yeah, that was a excellent shot there by Jackie. Didn't really leave anything on. There might be a little double here. But those are always a little bit tricky. <coughs> Trying to get to the same spot, it looks like. Good attempt there. Cross double is the right shot here. It looks a good, decent line, just a little bit short of length. But getting on this bulk cushion is never a bad thing in this sport. Now they say it's a, a thinking person's game. But you don't definitely want to be thinking about the bad stuff and having that ball against the cushion makes it just a little bit frustrating another thing to swirl around in your head when you're taking the shot it looks like in frame two Jamie Miller is uh, up on uh, is oh is it Louise are yeah, you talking about table Alex Yes, Louise yeah. actually Louise is uh, up in the first frame on uh, Jamie Miller. Um, Jamie Hunter is up in the second frame over... Uh, let me go to who that is over there. The Molina? No, not Molina. No? no? Which table is there? Uh, table uh, Bex over there. Oh, table Bex. Believe it might be Kathleen. Yeah, no. Jamie Hunter and Kathleen, I believe, are on table bets. Okay. The one shooting now? Yeah. Well, greetings from Germany. Dodev in the. Dodev26 over on YouTube. I well, hope you uh, got a good uh, amount of coffee in you over there in Germany. Because coming up at 1600, be about 4 p.m. local time here in Seattle, your very own German Diana Schuler, tournament director. She's up on the live stream? She'll be up on the live stream against sponsored own Bex Kenna. So uh, that's mm. going to be an interesting match to finish off day one. Yeah, it's a highlight match for sure. opportunity to close out the frame I think for Anyi and they're playing full three frames right so we're definitely going to see a third yeah as it always a lot of the times you know you see in the amateur game as much as this is professional side as well but we do have amateurs in it a lot of it comes down to the colors Very nice. <laughs> I think she just let out a little <laughs> breath there, just wanting that uh, cue ball just to hold for the yellow, and it's right in her zeitgeist to mm -hmm. take down and bury into the bottom of the pocket. So look at 
the scoreboard. Should be should be clearance here, I think, on. This black is the only weird part, but looking like uh twenty ooh. Yeah, I wanted that green to really kind of force Jackie not to come to the table because only one snooker is required with twenty seven in it and twenty five on the table. I right, already got the frame ball. I guess the yellow was the frame ball. So one snooker required. Going to make it a little bit tough, that's for sure. This is a decent opportunity, actually, for a snooker, I imagine. Rolling up to the back of this black. Sorry, back of this brown. Apologies. So maybe, like, too much angle, actually, that for that shot. Just thinking about... It's interesting, because Jackie will... If she wants to take the frame, she's going to need that black at some point in time. Yeah. And if there was an angle that she could have just to break it out off the screen, unfortunately, I don't think she got the snooker there. And she's still, it's a tricky green for on you, but she's left it on. I wonder how often she gets the the joke of on you. It was on. <laughs> See what you did there? Yeah. Probably not too much, I guess, un unless she's really on some obnoxious Americans like me or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Kenny, thanks for tuning in from Seattle. Well, you know what? We're in Seattle. Admission is free to this event, so if you're in the area, feel free to come on down to Ox Billiards. We're here on 1432 Broadway Street in the Capitol Hill area of Seattle. And uh, we're just getting started on this Wine Cellars U.S. Women's Snooker Open of mm -hmm. 2023. So definitely pay us a visit. Well, Dudiv26, our friend in Germany, I believe obviously all these matches, once they do come completion, they will be uploaded on Ox's YouTube and Facebook page. So you can rewatch them. You may not be able to watch them live because that's going to be uh, quite late into your uh, Friday night, almost early Saturday morning over there in Deutschland mm -hmm. when we have your very own Diana Schuler on the TV table a little later this afternoon. Yeah, you should be able to go to the live, um, live tab over on the YouTube channel, or I believe on the, uh, on the uh, Facebook page, it'll just automatically be the most recent post. So go ahead, check it out. Nice weight on your cue ball there, Jack. You just got it real tight to the top cushion. Mm, that's a good attempt. Yeah, Anya's not going to want to do anything with pretty much that black ball. Chuck saying, just be on the lookout. He, he said he might have seen a just stop oil protester over on the streets in Seattle. <laughs> I think we'll catch them before they get in here, that's for sure. You forget we got Big Daddy Kane, Mike Dominguez in here, and if anyone's going close with any illegal substance towards his table. Oh, we'll hear about it, that's for sure. We might even see it if it's on the TV table, because we know <laughs> these protesters always do like to make a scene for everyone. Really only pink to play behind on this. It's gonna try to float the blue past the pink. The advantage of putting it down here is that it might be able to open up the black, which definitely plays Yeah. Towards uh, Jackie's favor. I think if she goes cushion first. Oh no. Yeah. That actually that result was okay. Might actually get the snooker here. Oh gotten away with it? Is the fluker on? Uh, only if we have nails on a blackboard. No. Nope. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes that dreaded double kiss can be definitely dreadful, but it's very fortunate right there on Yi was. It's a tough spot to be in. Black is not available. Only really one ball to hide behind, but just with just one snooker you have to be playing for these opportunities. This is going to yeah. be a pot available, though. This um, definitely should be the frame. Yeah, just where that pink is, it's out in the open. It's not. If it was near a cushion, that would be just a lot better. Should take a 2-0 advantage for Anyi. 
But uh, if Jackie's able to take the third frame, uh, she'll get out at least with one frame on the board, which could be very important as the tournament progresses. But pretty sure Anyi wouldn't mind the whitewash 3 nothing here. So that's frame two to Anyi, and we'll be right back with some great frame three action. and on you to break off. Thanks for tuning in, Gary Orr, a great player up there in uh, Canada. Is it at all? You know, Vancouver's pretty close to Seattle, so any of you uh, Vancouverites up there in Canada, feel free to come on down. I know that border can be a bit tricky, but... Uh, you know what, I think I've educated about 15 border guards on the game of snooker. What's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice bump? thinner on it, but uh, still a good long red. Uh. Those long reds always make me a little nervous just, uh, just because you always have that risk of going straight into the pack and getting no black availability or anything, so I'd rather be on the black than on nothing, so it's a good Great. safety here. Mm -hmm. back onto that top cushion. to a cushion and the length you have to go. Very nice. What a oh, shot there. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Great snooker there. As Anyi has sacrificed four points, and Jackie is not going to put her back. She does have the option, but just how this red is sitting there and the black. And yes, he's got to slow down. Look out for that middle pocket. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> 
I could give a little uh, swing dance there at the end, kind of <laughs> making sure it wouldn't drop. But uh, luckily, the the big earthquake that's supposed to hit the west coast didn't happen there. Not quite in time, that's for sure. you could do on that, I think. You have to play for this loose red into the left corner next. The black's not tied up, so uh, a few little reds for Jackie that she could chip away with a little bit of lead, but uh, in a little bit of time, she's going to have to go into the pack. got ahead of herself a little bit. It's a tough thing with this, uh, the game, your mind just races ahead as you can see a red, then you see your color, then another red color. It's just a world of possibilities, but sometimes if you take your mind off that first red, it can be disastrous, as Jackie might find out the hard way here. Shots of uh, more higher ranked women players. As you see, the only thing that is moving is that back arm. There's a good shot right there on our camera. Just watch Anyi. Nothing is moving except that back arm just swiveling back and forth. I popped up a little early on that shot, but mm -hmm. it was all right. Hit a little pacey, too. I didn't mm -hmm. hit it that hard, but I guess she's playing for the loose red first. Makes sense. Always play for the loose reds when you can, and then run into the pack after you maximize your points. Not a bad strategy. Yeah, she could slowly take this red into the top left corner, be on the black. She's like playing with pace to come off the cushion. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done. Good angle on the black to get into the bunch here. So a little <coughs> bit of luck on this shot, but it's there for her. Okay, no real easy starter there for Jackie. This goes back to what we were saying about just you know racing ahead sometimes you know, take that uh, black for granted because you're really focused on you want to get a good split to continue the break. You can't really win a match or frame when you're sitting in your chair. That's what's so tough about this game. Just sitting there helpless, feeling handcuffed, just watching your opponent rack up points, and there's not anything you can do. It's the only sport, really, out there. You're just watching your opponent slowly putting you into the grave, shall we say. to get behind the pink. It's all right. Becky's going to have to come back with a good safety. As the reds are spread out. It's definitely one sitting over the top left pocket. to get behind the green actually making that red kind of in the middle of the left side of the table 
Oh, it went for the pot? Wow. Very nicely done. <clears throat> My voice skipped a few intervals there. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and it gets exciting in here, that's for sure. <laughs> that's how good the pot was, I guess. I think so, yeah. I guess looking back at that with that red there, there was a, a larger pocket. Mm hmm. Pockets are cut to professional standards. Our good friend and the great Simon Barker was in here a few weeks ago, just getting everything uh, tuned up for this great championship. Discussed it there, a little raise of the hand to apologize. That's. Uh, one of the pieces of etiquette that goes along with this game. Is, you know, all shots usually are intended. Flukes do count, but usually it's a, a raise of a hand. And the name actually is just eluding me right now. If anyone remembers in the chat room, there actually was a player when he had a fluke, mm -hmm. he would laugh at your face. Oh, he really? He wouldn't raise his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one way to approach it. Um. <laughs> Interesting. We got some elevated queuing here. It's a tough one. Oh, it's playing for the safety all the way. Wants that red to hold up. Yeah, not too bad. It's gonna leave a pot on though into this left corner pocket. Wanted to screw that back behind the pink, possibly. Oh, Shu Chang Chow are on YouTube. It says he's saying that I teleported from Vegas. Yeah, I was just there playing in the pool tournament. Great long pot. One. Teleport, I guess. Is, are we looking for the dim? Jim, that's clearly impossible. Or clearly illogical, <laughs> as <laughs> Mr. Spock would say all the time. Unfortunate, though, that, that red did it in the clogging up the blue. So now we're going to see another safety. Uh-oh, double kiss. Sixty asking, did he react? Uh, that player that used to laugh in your face, did he have a reaction whenever somebody flipped against him or no? <laughs> I wonder. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, Xu Cheng, this is the all Hong Kong group. An Yi, Ip Wan, and uh, for our very own Francis Cho. All from Hong Kong. Pretty cool, if you ask me. But it's definitely nice to see that uh, Snooker's getting more out there in literature and film. So if you're a fan of the game, like a great rack pack that came out a few years ago by uh, the BBC was a great production of the Alex Higgins and Steve Davis rivalry from the 80s. And Brendan Cooper actually has written a great book called Deep Pockets, a real uh, philosoph philosophical <laughs> book. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed it. Really you should look out. And as well, Luke Edwards did a great book about Patsy Houlihan. And a lot mm. of people are like, who is that? And it's anyone I've heard before. He is supposedly the best snooker player you've never seen. Mm. So unfortunately, uh, back when he was trying to get on the pro circuit, Joe Davis was in charge, and it was kind of a, a closed kind of shop for various reasons. So Patsy actually had to uh, hustle his way up and down England just to make money with his snooker abilities. But people say he was just a phenomenal player. And a very, very nice guy. Mm. And sometimes you hear when someone says a hustler, you feel they might be a little bit shady or something like that. Mm -hmm. But no, he he had time for everyone. When uh, you were coming in the room, I know uh, when Tony Mio and Jimmy White were first starting out, they met up with Patsy. And Patsy was just full of knowledge, really helping out those guys. And, uh, you know, Tony Mio, great player. But we definitely know what Jimmy White's been doing for almost over 40 years Mm -hmm. still on the tour so two books definitely check them out you can find them pretty much anywhere where you get literature you can get the old fashioned way that are actual tangible books that can still help you kill those flies or you can get it on an ebook Mm, 
have mm. to say, Christian, these two ladies are not afraid of the long pots. <laughs> That's for sure. Just, like, just no fear, right? Just you know, they come and they just take it on. They just wonder if, like, wonder if that might change. Obviously, you know. Jackie, you're going to know that there's going to be some very lower ranked players, and say the locals that are here, more of an amateur player. But you never know, you know, an amateur might hit a run or something like that. So, And they don't know the player, maybe because they're going for these long pots, they do know their opponents and know they might not be in too much trouble. Yes, Nigel, it's too bad that we didn't have uh, Rianne over here, or do you have. Uh, the top five players, top five ranked players on the women's side in this lovely tournament. But having four or five isn't too bad in the second year of this tournament. Not too shabby, I agree. No, this is uh, Anyi and Minx's first time on the U.S. soil playing the great game of snooker. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, Bex Kenna and Jamie Hunter were here last year. They battled it out in the final. Speaking of Mink, she is in the building now. <laughs> very, very, very nice lady. Definitely always um, sweet, kind, very nice, gentle smile when you see her in a room. But then she gets on the table. It's a whole different person. Determined. So she'd like to put her name on the trophy, that's for sure. Long pot attempt here. This is going to be a spicy one if it goes in. Oof. Great attempt. You always know if it, if it ever just catches one of the points or rattles a bit, it was always a lot closer than you might think. Because at that distance, you got to be quite accurate. That's for sure. Yep. Left a... Mid to long pot here, obviously for Anyi going from one side of the table to the other. Always a little bit more difficult. But, uh, they have no fear, as we've said, going mm -hmm. for these long pots. And what you really want to do is, you know, when there's a lot more reds on the table, you want to cut the table in half, make it a six by six table, and just put some reds and blacks together to create a high score. Tough side pockets. It was a tough angle. Mm -hmm. But absolute class, though, this match. Definitely. That is correct. Yes. Uh, 1991 film, I think... Uh, it had almost like a martial arts masse shot, I believe. You're talking about the comment, right? This uh, feature, this film that uh, our friend... Shu Cheng. Uh, Shu Cheng, thank you. Yeah. He's bringing up uh, that Stephen Chow starred in and Jimmy White was in it. I have seen that little clip. I think some uh, Stephen Chow, I think, flew up in the air and did some martial arts coming down and tried a masse. Maybe he had, like, dug the cue into the table. It's... Uh, mm -hmm. 1991, that was a long time ago. <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to do that in 91. Yeah. This kind of broadcast, so. Fortunately, I wasn't born yet either, so. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> the truth comes out. But it's, it's really great for this game. I must admit, we have to thank the internet. Oh, uh, for sure. Because I do remember when I was a young chap at, back in Canada, being able to watch some snooker on their sports network. But then all of a sudden, it kind of disappeared. And it just really hasn't come back from mainstream mm. sports entertainment in North America so getting the internet going and getting us with these live streams just really opens up the door and well not everyone's going to pick up a cue and play snooker but uh, you know there might be a few that might go hey I don't mind giving this a try mm -hmm. 
I know Rihanna Evans has spoke highly of uh, little girls uh, back in England getting inspired. I think there's one great story that she heard of that a little girl was like, wow, I didn't know women could do this. I thought they were just referees. So hopefully we have some uh, youngsters tuning in mm -hmm. and to get inspired. Because I think they're, we're getting away from the old feeling, you know. Obviously, the, the the image of North America was a hustling scene, a, a smoke-filled room, dark atmosphere in these pool halls. But that, that that's a going of the dodo bird, shall we say. As things are changing, as these rooms are definitely becoming more family-friendly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, you can't smoke anywhere inside anymore, so that's kind of out of the way. If we make it more open for like the whole family to come, have a good family experience, we're doing uh, good things there, and that's what you guys are providing here at Ox. That's for sure. It's a uh, no nonsense. So local uh, gal Jocelyn is leading two nothing in her match. If you want all the scores. They're being updated at snookerscores.net. Just search out the U.S. Open. We're in the third frame here. You know, Jackie would like to at least get one frame on the board in the match, as all frames do count. Defending champion Jamie Hunter is leading her match 2 0. And that's leading the third frame 49 to 8. Jamie Miller is trailing. I believe that's Louise. Uh, one nothing, Louise Foster. And here we have Jack A up by three points, 25 to 23 in the third frame. We're just getting started. You know, up next on our TV table will be Mink Nutcharak against local Marissa Du, a youngster, a lot of potential there. I think it's going to be a great experience. would definitely shock the world mm -hmm. if Marissa was to take Mink, but hey, on oh the yeah. soccer table, anything's possible. She's got her dad coach in the room here. It's nice to see that Marissa is still maintaining the fun and enjoying it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, she just had a pretty nice uh, placement. She played in the, uh, I believe, BEF National uh, Championships uh, about a few week, couple weeks ago, I think. Um, pool tournament. I believe 14 and under, 18 and under, 22 and under, I think, uh, events. And I believe she got third place on uh, on one of them against two uh, dynamite pool players that are coming up as well, two other ladies, uh, Sophia Mast and uh, the name excuse me, uh, Savannah Easton, Roadrunner Easton, and the Pink Dagger, Sophia Mast. So she ended up third in that, in that tournament, so pretty good for, for showing up. Yes, Samuel Lee turning in does uh, helps me with some great work back there in Canada in our events that we have in uh, the Vancouver area. Uh, we've got one local referee, Mr. Dave Daly, and then uh, Vinita Sanin. Thank you very much. Vinita's uh, made the trip down from Vancouver. <coughs> and He's the roaming ref right there in the middle. Top of your screen. True. And all four star tables are in use for this tournament, so four star tables. At Ox, beautifully maintained, beautiful long pot there by Yan Yi. Wow, excellent long pot, yeah. And Chuck, yes, we were around when Luca Bissell was in there here. And you know what I noticed with Luca? It's very interesting. It seems like when he heard the pot go down, that's when he lifted his head. Mm -hmm. He kept his head down very deliberately for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. Luca Bissell, absolute class, super nice guy as well. Amazing event. Eight. Definitely. Nice and humble, too. You know, mm -hmm. you think, well, he's the 2023 world champion, but you wouldn't know it because he doesn't feel like he has that air about him. He just comes in and is very appreciative of all the work. And really happy to see that there's a great community out here supporting the game. And as I tell him, I'm Canadian. He's a non-Brit. He's a Belgian. So you, you got a Canadian in your corner. <laughs> Sorry, Brits, but, you know, <laughs> you guys got a lot of players to cheer for. Ooh. No 
fluke there. Tough pot into the middle, but was laying up for this nice yellow next. So a big miss there for Manyi because she might be giving away this frame depending on the opportunity remaining. This is a chance, I think, for it to take the, uh, the last frame. And a lower angle on that yellow. She's got a really good in the cue ball there, but did it quite nicely. Yeah, excellent speed. So this would be a nice little steal here for Jack A, that's for sure. Getting that one frame. I mean, the difference from her going home, but kind of want a group of three. Uh, we'll see. You know, Francis could be a wild card that really could give these other two Hong Kong players a run for their money. Now, uh, are we have two players advancing from each group? Is that right? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. There's four groups, two players advance, as we'll have the knockout round, I believe, will start uh, maybe the first round of the, the, the quarterfinals tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then potentially the semis and finals on Sunday. Okay. Uh, but definitely take a look at snookerscores.net. That's where you can find the schedule, results of all the matches here. Oh. As we like to say, where's that DeLorean? Jack, you wanted to go back in time. That was yeah. a red she would make 99 out of 100 times. I think this... Uh This okay. edge, yeah. Is there an edge of this? It's tough from our angle. Did she get second prize in the beauty contest here? No, oh, and he was able to strike it. How's the speed on this? Is the length there? Oh, I think pot might be on. Like I said, I always, uh, yeah, the, based on this angle, it looks pretty close, but... Both player and referee taking a look. And I think On Yi is going to come over and take a look as well. Everyone getting the action. I think even some spectators are taking a look. <laughs> Big pot here for this frame. Blue and pink out in the open. Oh, managed to overcut it, actually. Yeah, there's no real trouble ball. Uh, Brown has run safer now, so I won't be surprised if On Yi tries to get behind the black here. That was the line and length on this. I'll take that any day of Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I think the two cushion escape is really all she wants to do here. Two cushions coming behind the brown. Stop the mm -hmm. cue ball dead and extract, hit it as full as possible. But just a world class shot from Anyi there. Oh, just missed it. Yeah, no contact, right? Oh, cannons into the blue, so a five point penalty there. But, uh,. The benefit of this one is that you do get a uh, you get a little bit of a chance now that you have kind of calibrated. Yeah, not bad that she left five points with six points in the mat in the frame. It's not the end of the world there. Because really, Jackie just wants to make the correct shot, not to just leave this brown easily on for Anyi. Looks a lot closer. Oh, actually, no. It looked like the spin wasn't there. Now it goes to the pink. I think this will be coming back for sure. The blue is just a bit of a pain. So that's what's great about this sport, too. Referee and player both, you know, talking together just to get the uh, placement correctly back. Yeah, it looks actually really close. It is a tough job, definitely being the referee. You know, you've got to keep your attention, you know, when the 
one player will be sitting in the chair. They can rest and think about other things. The referee has to be on all the time. Last attempt. Proves to be a good one. Where's the brown going to end up? Uh oh, just passed. Oh, no. Bad hit off that horn right there. Just slid a little bit. It would be all right, but this looks like a frame clearing chance for on you to take this match 3 0. Yeah, perfect on this blue. Painful, painful few fouls there. So yeah, we will to be uh, after this match, stepping aside for just a, a few moments, but we'll be coming up with our next match of Mink Nacharat against Marissa Du. It should be a fantastic match here, but here on Yi strikes first. She takes a 3 nothing victory in her first match of this Wine Cellars U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. So keep that stream standing by. Even feel free to like us and subscribe because then you'll get updates of when we come back live. So stay tuned. Great match coming up soon.
All right, everybody, we are back live here at the Wine Cellars U.S. Open Snooker Open Championship of 2023, live at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. It's a great match here. We've got Mink Nacharat, number two ranked woman in the world, going, on Seattle, going against Seattle's own Marissa Du. David Burney is in the booth, along with Christian Youngers. We're going to get excited about this one. Mink has definitely got the, a great resume. She was world champ back in 2022. Last year she teamed up with Neil Robertson to become the, the mixed doubles champion. And she is the first woman to ever have a 147. Has been uh, recorded and verified, so uh, quite a feat she has there. And Marissa Du, young local, but definitely keen on the game. So she definitely knows that she's up against a tough opponent in the Thai player. But uh, I think she's hopefully going to take a probably pretty good learning experience from this. So this is the first match for both these players, so maybe just a little filling it out here and there, you know. There's, uh, these balls are kind of opening up down in the, the business end of the table, as we like to call it. It's not a bad shot there by Marissa. She has left, it looks like a long pot to the top left corner. And we saw in our last match that the two Hong Kong players did not fear long pots. Let's see if... Uh, Mink wants to start her campaign off with a bang or maybe just uh, nip off a red and come back into bulk. Definitely uh, appreciate everyone that's tuning in on the stream. Feel free to let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any comments or questions, there's always some uh, good chats out there, some good insight from all our fans. Should be a good one too. Marissa Du, upcoming player from Seattle. Let's go. Presenting Ox. She is one of our sponsored players. You didn't know. Okay, there's, so there's two Ox sponsored players, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it's Marissa Du here. And then uh, Daniel Sardincilio, local pool player, 22 year old. True. Unfortunately, Daniel cannot play in this tournament. <laughs> but uh, Bex can actually. Can, uh, oh, sorry, three sponsor. snookered. Yeah. Three sponsored, sorry. Bex Ken are very own as well. How can I forget? It is true, Mr. Brock, that having Mink and Anyi in this room at this tournament is uh, a great thing. Great to have them over here on this side of the Atlantic. It's just, you know, going to inspire. Think, uh, being in here last night, a lot of... Uh, the local players got to, you know, chat with those higher rank players. So it's lots of lots of smiles, lots of laughs last night, that's for sure, when we was really enjoying their time. Oh, looks like a first chance here for Mink. We get safeties back and forth. Made a mess of the reds a little bit, but chance is on. I think Bottom red in this bunch also goes into the right corner pocket, so there's a few reds to play for, maybe. It's gonna be tricky. Oh, she's legendary swan neck. Yeah, that doesn't come out that much. Wow, interesting. That's a swan. Some people might say it looks like a slug a little bit, <laughs> like a little bit of like a, like a snail coming out of its shell or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See. She might need to get the extended spider, so uh, she's running out of options underneath that table. Yeah. <laughs> Third choice. Third time to try? Guess so. So referee Daly's gonna have to take a good look at this, just make sure nothing touches any of those reds, so be patient. Oh very nice. Wow. What a pot there. Yeah. 
Ming's not one of the taller players on the circuit, so she really had to get up for that. But uh, got to like her style, because what I'm seeing, she's got a, a good sock game today, which I always appreciate. Mm-hmm. Got to show off yours later, huh? That you can put on the webcam. Hello. Socks can go, but faces, no. Perfect. <laughs> Speed webcam, David Burney, always dressed nicely. Oh, you're looking good too, Christian. Yeah, we got to rock the ox, ox polo, you know. Nothing wrong with the uh, good old game jersey. Excellent pot there below the black. Those are always a fun time. 16. Yes, that, Mike, that is correct. Ox says welcome Judge Trump, Ricky Walden, Luca Bissell. Mink Nantra to Nan Yi. Bex so. Kenna, Jimmy Hunter. It's more coming down the pike as well, maybe. We'll see. Mm hmm. We definitely are approaching when we go over to Sheffield, you know, talking to some more and more players, mm -hmm. trying to get them over to North America. 17. Real chances on now. True, I think this red, the top of all those reds, is going to go into the top right and a good angle to get back on the black because there's 24 points there. There's three reds and three blacks have gone down. So uh, let's just see what happens here. We're not going to talk about anything really. We're just going <laughs> to watch. You're, you're afraid of it, aren't you, the commentator's curse? Huh. Never, never any fear. Well, these ladies are tough. I don't want to be found in a back alley when they hear the repeat broadcast and I started, you know, cursing them on these great breaks. But <laughs> this is They're going to get back at you at the karaoke booth, but I feel like that's going to happen. <laughs> 32. Yeah, but I think all three of these are available into this, uh, this corner pocket. Let's just take a look to see what else goes, but... At some point, probably wants to put the pink back on its spot, I imagine, as well. Should be all right for right now. Yeah, I think uh, she can go forward off right. of this. Play off one cushion for the black, I think. Oh, oh just missed it by a tad. And the black was there, so <coughs> yeah. it was looking promising for that 147. I can say it now that we're all clear, but hey. I don't know about you at home, but we were kind of getting a little excited in the booth because we know Mink has done it before. Mm hmm But she's left a chance for Marissa now to get in, so let's see what Marissa can do with her chances. Yeah, I've noticed about Marissa's game, she has these three, two or three long practice strokes. And then pulls back, pause, fire. I think there she only had two. Sometimes when she gets a little quick on her pre-shot routine, I feel like... Uh, can cause her to miss some unlikely pots, but it is tricky. You know, obviously, you know, if you play the game, you're a fan of the game, so you know what Mink can do. And when you draw her in your first match, it's going to be a little nerve wracking. So I think Marissa's just got to focus and play her game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the redwood is out. Mm. Mink showing her class so far. High break of 32. Pretty good to start this match. And now on another chance, I think. Both reds available on the bottom of this bunch. Maybe has to go into the pack one time, I imagine. Sure, a little stun off this black for those two reds that you were talking about, Christian. Excellent. She didn't like that one on <laughs> the stroke, but it looked good to me. I don't know. Eight. 
really. Building up a commanding lead in this first frame, Mink is up 41 0. And this looks like a lineup drill in the making almost. 16. Yeah, plays actually out of the high end snooker club over there in Thailand. It was uh, the venue for last year's Women's World Championship. Mm hmm, that's right. Who was it that won? Uh, Oh, we met her in Sheffield, too. Winner of last year's World Championship. The name escapes me. Yes, yes, it's a... I do remember her name. It's quite... It's another Thai player. Mm -hmm. Quite a... Uh, a long... Kind of tongue-twisting type name. Is not, you know. Yeah, bye. Thank you, yes. Yeah, we go by... We'll, we'll just say bye. Just to that. True. Some of their official names are quite long, and uh, where you're not used to them, they can kind of tongue twist you on the mic. But sometimes we have uh, mm. oh, just caught that cushion on the way in, huh? Oh, tough, tough. Oh, Bio's runner up. Yes, David Brock, correct. Uh, Sarah Palm. Was the winner, so nice to see a new winner of the World Championship. Good restraint there by Marissa. You know, sometimes when you just look at the scoreboard, when you're down 56, nothing early on, you kind of want to just get a red to get your arm going and get in the game but sometimes you just gotta focus and if there's a much smarter and better safety shot to play that is the shot to take on but Mink responded nicely by putting that cue ball tight to the ball top cushion yeah, it's a tough spot for Marissa here it's gonna play this kind of a little dump shot try to get this up Close to that cushion is going to leave a pot on, though. And this does escape out for the blue or the green, maybe. Just could go two cushions around, looks like. A little bit of low outside. Yep. Good attempt there. Just caught it a bit too thick to the pocket. Thin, I guess thinner side now, so. Now it's sports, and we know that anything can happen in sport, but obviously the bookies probably are banking on you. Could maybe think a, a, a mink and on you final. And if we do get to that, I'm not predicting anything, but I'm predicting it'd be interesting to see about the long pots between those. Mm -hmm. As our last match, on you was putting. Uh, they were so going in. They were going in, and with mink, she's just struggling a little bit. Yes, this is the first match that she's in. But. Uh, it's going to be tough for anybody to reach the final here. There's some great competitors, so. Yeah, on Yi's over on the side, playing on the Chinese eight ball table, playing with some snooker balls and practicing the stroke, it looks like. This game here to play, that's for sure. Yeah, that shows me dedication mm -hmm. by on Yi. Reminds me of uh, being at the Western Canadian Championships a few years ago, which Tom Finstead won, but he won a match. As soon as it was done, he was back on the practice table, practicing away. Just uh, one shot that he might have felt that he was a bit off in his previous match. So, as much as practice can get mundane sometimes, it's uh, you got to do it to get the results. Big prediction here by Mike from Birmingham. Thinking Mike, Mink. My apologies will one day win the world championship against some of her male counterparts. Uh, excellent split of the pack there. She's on this red to the left corner. Going to play for two cushions, maybe play for black in the same pocket, maybe pink into the left middle. It's got a lot of options. Oh, I should play for blue. I guess the angle was a little bit higher. Give a a little tie dance to hope to put in that red, but uh, yeah, with that uh, red that she took on, she did at least have the options, which is always nice. You could either have black or pink. Oh, 
a little bit short on that. But on the board. Definitely good not to follow it in. It was a bit uh, dicey there that she might have followed that in. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pretty steep on this black, though. And quite the oh. pot there for Marissa. Watch out, red. Nicely done. Just on this one into the left middle. True. It's interesting, Marissa's potty language. Sometimes she just walks around and just doesn't look like she's like, eh, whatever. I don't really care that much. I'm just going to go out and do some things. Very casual player, you would mm -hmm. say, right? But uh, this is nice. Let's see. Hopefully, maybe she can uh, string something together here. Got a red and a black, so at least she's potted ball in the match. You know, she's feeling all right. Yeah, this red doesn't pass the black into the left corner. I think if you're going to take this thin cut on, it's a little bit tough with this hampered queuing. Oh, that was just tough. Yeah. might have just swerved away from me. Yeah, so thin, you know. A tough shot for uh, anyone, expect the older timers. But uh, young Marissa, she's got a good set of eyes there, but still very, very thin and very tricky. And it's Mink giving it a go. I think so. I think on this side it plays a little bit easier. Into the middle, yeah. I wonder if it just favored one side of the middle pocket. It was looking pretty straight mm -hmm. in line, say, with that middle pocket. Didn't know if there was angle, but maybe, yeah, coming from the ball end, as you alluded to. Christian that it was just favored a bit so you can just be a little fraction of a bit more mm -hmm. thicker. Pinch the puck as, as the Brits would say. It's going down in the corner now. Look at this, look at this pot. Wow. Very nice. Absolute class. So Mink with a commanding lead here, 75 to 8 in this first frame. They're playing all three frames in these round-robin matches, as every frame will count. The top two players of each group will move on to the quarterfinals, the knockout phase. You can find all the scores and updates at snookerscores.net. Just search out uh, the U.S. Open. Here, here at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. That's the winesellers.com. U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. The second year that we've been here, and it just keeps getting more and more exciting with each year. So we're glad you're tuning in. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Wine Cellars, Jason Miller. Check them out at winesellers.com. Yeah, stock game is strong in this one. That's for sure. On a break of 18, I think this is going to be end of frame because in the group stage they are playing a, a bit of an abbreviated match format. I think if they get two to three snookers required in the match, something like that, it will end early from what I True. remember. With the eight snookers required, that's quite a feat. So Marissa concedes there, mm -hmm. and Mink takes this first frame. But we'll stand by, and we'll be right back with frame two action. Back here with frame two with Mink Nutrak ready to break off. Almost went in off on the break shot. But fortunate enough, she's come back safely into the bulk area. Left a long red on there for Marissa. As she tempted Marissa into taking something. In. 
how that is going to be aware of the enough if she goes to the left side of that red. Oh, yep. It's the one thing that there was the danger with that shot. Obviously, kind of glancing off the cluster of reds on the right side. She did have to contend with a, a few reds over there that she might have cannoned into, so. It's still early. Lots of points on the table, so that four points shouldn't be too much of a problem for Marissa. Although we definitely... Uh, know that Mink probably is the the stronger of the two, but Marissa is definitely getting a lot of great support here in the chat room. It reminds me of when uh, the great Stephen Hendry was up and coming in the snooker scene. And at one point, Steve Davis was going to go up play an exhibition with this young Stephen Hendry. And Ian Doyle, I believe, Stephen Hendry's manager at the time, told Steve Davis just to thrash the kid, just destroy him. And sure enough, Steve Davis won 10 1, 10 2, 10 0 in this match. And ooh, she hit it. Just barely she hit it there. But so Steve Davis really destroyed uh, Stephen Hendry there. And oh, it was a foul. And now we know what Stephen Hendry has done, won seven world championships and just been uh, probably one of the greatest players ever. So as much as we don't like to lose, hopefully uh, Marissa will learn lots. That was a great long pot there by Mink. A tricky pink into the side. I'd be sure of that because she's going to be opening up some reds. Just kind of a little bit. I wanted to pull up a little bit more to be on the good side of the blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got an angle on the green to come up and down table. That's correct. Uh, gentlemen in the chat room, Stephen Hendry is doing great work with his Q-Tips channel. It's kind of a... Uh, Amazing to see a little bit because anyone that's followed the sport for a long time know that uh, Stephen was quite a quiet person. Didn't really mix, just kind of focus on the task at hand. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's becoming quite warmed up to the camera, does a great job. It's also fun seeing kind of the behind the scenes with the other, other players on the tour, etc. It's been fun to watch. True, as someone that uh, really doesn't know the game of snooker, if you turn it on, someone that doesn't know much might be like, why am I watching two waiters <laughs> <laughs> play this billiard game? But uh, yeah, when they're kind of, you know, away from the table, they can loosen up and, you know, you can see that they're just human beings like all the rest of us. Yeah, definitely. But just with a great ability to play this very tricky game. These players, when you look at it, just make it look real easy. But believe me, you, it is not. Just try putting your hand on one of these tables. It's larger than a Yale Town apartment. It's six feet by 12 feet. And it's a little miss there by Marissa. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think all these, all these reds do go into this left corner, from what I can tell. And this year we have the annual trophy, actually one that uh, is going to be sticking around at Ox for many years to come. Oh yeah, it's oh it's uh, in the in the right corner right there, right on the little table. It is in the room, oh. so uh, the winner will get their name put on that trophy. 
They obviously take a, a little trophy replica when they go home. But, uh, good shot of the room, and there we go. As Christian is also uh, directing the video how it goes. Obviously, it's not an outlet they're winning for. <laughs> it's just that trophy right there. He's a master of many things. So as you can see, Jamie Hunter is there, great front and center, because she won it last year. But who will be joining her this year? Only time will tell. There she is. Who's going to put their hands on that come Sunday night? Yeah, there's a trophy right there. Looks nice, though. Jimmy Hunter with the first name on it, 2022. And I think uh, each little spot on it's going to be the next plaque going around in a circle, most likely. Yeah, on the top. And then the next layer. And then I think the third layer will be able to fit two of those lovely crowns. So I think we're good for about 40 years. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So... I might be a senior citizen when that happens, but Christian will be able to drive when that happens. <laughs> might be the case. Yes, and, uh, yes, Chuck, thank you very much. I uh, was very fortunate enough uh, <coughs> to get on a little global uh, discussion uh, over in Sheffield this past World Championships as uh, they had uh, some of the Belgian broadcasters there, obviously, to follow Luca. Mm -hmm. And a Chinese... Um, reporter and I was over there taking photos and the good Sam Fletcher one said well we have David as well from Canada as much as we don't have a player in the tournament from Canada but maybe he can offer some insight of what's going on uh, in the other side of the Atlantic and I was happy to be on that panel and yeah hopefully uh, hopefully I did North America right and didn't make any too much flubs and over that on that little I think it was a 10 minute interview so mm -hmm. Oh, excellent pot there. Awfully tough when it's that close to the uh, top cushion. Did well to miss. Mink showing her class. Mm -hmm. Probably going to make quick work of these reds. I think they're all open, it seems like. Yeah, blue's on spot, so it's a good uh, safety net, as she can see there. She's coming back for that. It's kind of pink is out of commission, so it could mm -hmm. be a black and blue kind of break coming up here for Mink. Yeah, she doesn't really have to do any more cannons, it seems. And just sort of talking about great players, obviously. Some people were very fortunate enough to see the 2023 world champion Pin Luca Bercel do an exhibition here. You know what was really fascinating? His Q&A afterwards, because there's mm. been a lot of talk. Obviously, people, have, he made public, obviously, that he was enjoying maybe a little bit of partying uh, <laughs> and not really practicing uh, during the World Championship. And made a good point. Sometimes, you know, players, when they go to the World Championship, they pretty much have the game. They're not going to find their game there. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting how he alluded to when he was young and starting out the game, he would be practicing for 12 hours a day. Hmm. So he really did put the time in, and, and I think he came with the right attitude, and it shows he won it. He was just kind of feeling relaxed. Yeah, he said back in the day, I guess, right when he was kind of coming up is when uh, mm -hmm. when he was learning the game and getting getting his uh, grounding for it. And now he says he only plays like a couple hours or so a day at most, something mm -hmm. like that. It's pretty surprising, but he's got he's kind of that 34. that style of you know the messy Ronaldo discussion. He's like the kind of naturally talented type player who maybe doesn't have to put as much um, effort to get to the same level. But when they do put in the effort, you can obviously see above and beyond how he can perform. Yeah, and starting so young, like it's just, you know, the muscle memory is there. It's ingrained. Like Anyi, who we saw in yeah. last match, uh, her father was an owner of a snooker room back in Hong Kong, so she started playing when she was 13. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Luca was playing, started playing when he was nine. 
Uh, I think Stephen Hendry started playing late when he was 13. 42. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, 13 is, l is late, I guess. <laughs> But it's nice to see the class, the great class of 92, the John Higgins, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and Mark Williams. They're definitely showing that it's not a young person's game. It's not like tennis. You know, it's good. Obviously, the eyes are going to start to go as you get older, but mm -hmm. you know, Ronnie's still winning things. So is John and Mark. So and definitely, I think Fred Davis famously made the semifinals of the World Championships when he was in his 70s, I believe way back so looks like she's going to play for this rightmost red get it out of the way earlier don't know if the two reds on the left part of the table block each other into the left corner might make things more difficult but uh, this might be the high break of the tournament so far she's on 50 51 now at least highest break so far of from what we've seen on the TV table. I think um, An Yi had something around 40, from what I remember in the first match. At least high 30s. Don't remember yeah. exactly. but um, All those stats are up there on snookerscores.net. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and there is a high break prize, right? $500 I high break prize? I believe so. 58. Single might actually be perfect if she wants to cannon into these reds. Don't think she'll go for it. She'll probably just stun over for the black and then maybe play behind, dropping behind them to the right corner pocket if they don't pass each other. Ah, the classic. She made the right call. Get the extension out. So often you see players uh, stretch out on these tables, not used to it, and take the pot for granted, but... Yeah, using that little mini butt to help her uh, Excellent pot. put that red in. Yeah, all the players now definitely have all the extensions that they need to reach every angle of these very large 6x12 tables. Even the great, uh, actually, Fern Loyer from Canada mm -hmm. uh, travels around with his own rest. Oh, wow. So. So based on this shot, it looks like the reds do pass into the left corner pocket. So a real chance for Mink here to get a nice high break. 66. True. Tough red, though, is going to be on the bottom part of the table. I guess top cushion. Yeah, excellent cueing. Definitely, yeah. Just the head is so solid, just so smooth. Like you said, she has a nice long pause at the back. Forcing that smooth transition. Very impressive to watch. Hesperus Rex saying, lovely to see the tournament back. He's watching from Eastburn in the UK. We're up to 135 viewers across YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Share the live stream out. Like and subscribe. True. Mink is on a high break right here. Uh-oh, she's falling a little bit far on this red. Yeah, shake of the head. It's on a break of 74. So a big pot here. If she can manage to get on a color. Imagine there's a big chance for this entry. Just run through, get past that black. Oh, oh just nice. caught it too thick. I think that's going to be a concession there with 83 to 1. It's definitely an uphill battle for Marissa, so she concedes. So Ming Nacharat has two frames to the good here. Would really like to take a 3 nothing victory, but Marissa's going to fight hard, try to get at least one frame to the good on the board for her. And we'll stand <coughs> by for frame three to come up as Dave Daly racks up the balls.
And we're back here with frame three, the final frame of this match in a round robin match with Marissa Du breaking off, going against the number two seed in the world on the women's side, Mink Nacharat. She's also seeded 100 on the Pro Tour, so she does have her card there. Great long pot to get things started, and Mink's a Definitely a young woman in this game, and the future definitely looks bright for her. <coughs> yeah, what a, what a long pot there. Don't doubt we're going to see Mink go pretty deep in this tournament, as she probably usually does on the women's tour. It's also interesting, very exciting, as uh, some of the ladies have uh, warmed up to Canada's Marianne McConnell because she was the uh, 1984 runner-up in the World Championship against Mandy Fisher, who's the oh, president of wow. the World Women Snooker. So it's kind of nice to see. I know like Tessa Davison has come back after a long pause. That's right. Uh, yeah, we saw her in the Sheffield as well. Mary Talbot Deegan, who was here last year. Wow, what Mary, if you're listening, we're missing you, you and Emma, you know. Pretty much the uh, Betty and Veronica, maybe, of the uh, <laughs> women's scene. Those two <laughs> like to travel together, have fun together, but uh, we miss you too. Hopefully you're doing all right, and maybe you can make it back to the U.S. for uh, next year's tournament. Wow. Look at this split here. Just unfortunate. The black doesn't go to the top right, but she, I think that red that's... Not right behind the pink. The other one behind there should go into the top left, and she runs through that. She'll be on the pink. So mm -hmm. another good opportunity for a, a big contribution here for Mink. Doesn't want to nudge this red, though, too much. She might run through and, and knock, yeah, kind of knock the red up towards the pink, wants it to pop out so the pink is still available. But the problem is it might actually block... Uh, the spot for the pink. Good eye, Christian. I think that's what Mink is noticing there as well, just with the angle of that red that I was alluding to. Mm -hmm. Just with the natural angle, it's going to push into that red and spoil the pink. So. Yeah. But I had to maybe put more pace into it to avoid that, and I might have messed, messed with the pot controlling the cue ball. So, so just going to swing it around on this one. Yeah. Hold Let's on to your seats, everybody. This is going to get exciting. Probably between... Between brown and pink, yellow, brown and yellow around the two rails. Oh, between brown and green, try to check it. Oh, no fear, have no fear. There's a red on. Yeah. A long red, but uh, definitely didn't want to cannon into that green, but break continues. Oh, Nicole D in the chat saying, stream looks good, thanks. Rooting for the NWPA ladies. Go Marianne McConnell. NWPA, the Northwest Women's Pool Association. As their tour uh, here in the Northwest, Oregon, Washington venues. Pretty cool. We hosted it last year. Oh, look at the speed here. Wow, what a pot. Yeah, you got to have all the shots to be here. You can have the power shots, but you also need the delicate, fine, mm -hmm. sweet shots. So Ming's got it all in her arsenal. Wants the cannon this red, you think? Nope, it's going to play around it. Excellent speed. Beautiful. Perfect yeah. angle to come back to the black again. And then opens up the pocket to the right corner. Mm -hmm. This could be a big break on. It's going to have a choice of reds here. Yeah, I think I'm playing for the red close to the black. Excellent uh, control, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cut into that nicely. That Very just cool. zipped back and around. I think she wanted maybe another inch or so out of it, but still pretty good position. Yeah, no outland, just, you know, wild shots here. She's just keeping it small, compact, controlling that cue ball beautifully. Probably going to take this red that's near the uh, cue ball right now. That's going to be a good screw shot. Oh, 
Threw it back a bit more for the top red, so. Yeah, that looks. 42. It's pretty straight on it. It's gonna roll forward. It's might be tempted to run a little cannon into the pack. What do you think? Just catch the bottom red slightly if she needs to open him up eventually still, so. Yeah, tricky to see from this angle, and I think, yeah, that would be the shot there if she can do that run, and as you say, clip just to open up those reds and then be onto the black into the opposite top corner pocket. Oof, that was close. Yeah, I think she was going for it. She kind of pinched the pocket toward that direction a little bit. The important thing, she did make the pocket and is on and the black, so. It's very close. Just still has an still has opportunity to break him out later, because... Either of these reds that are just below the pink go into the into the middle, I'm pretty sure. Or one goes in the middle, one goes to the left corner, something like that maybe. Just be playing, clear a few of these up first and then maybe deal with it. 50. On a break of 50, so so far a high break of 74. Might have a chance to break it here, it's gonna all depend on this cannon. Looks like she's gonna play the cannon into the pack after the black here. Just play a little below it and flick off a few of the reds. Yep, good angle to go into that. Now, which red do you try to cannon into is the question. Kind of like cannoning into the leftmost red. And you'll probably have something on into the right corner. Of like those bottom two you're seeing, like just the yeah. left side. Yeah, I kind of like that too. It's just going to force kind of like a open up like a flower hopefully we should say if you if you also end up aiming and hitting the uh it doesn't need to be a hard quick like breakout she just needs to delicately open them up well she's opened up for that red on the bottom 58 Is true, Raymond. I think Mint can be, uh, you know, maybe the next uh, ten-time world champion. But I think this in this game, the standards getting higher and higher because there's just getting more and more exposure. Unfortunately, might have to send it with the green around the rails. Maybe you can also check it one rail with some some left hand side. I was playing the brown forward one two cushions maybe. A lot of options. It's probably the safest bet because you have a lot a lot of table to play with on the left part. Ooh. Oh yeah. man. And yeah, like with that green and blue, they're kind of going almost blind pocket where you know she can see the brown into the pocket. Yeah. Uh, it's trickier though too because you have to come in and out of bulk and you might run into the yellow or something like that. You can always get kind of messy. Strong 59 break. Now Marissa might take this red of the three in a row. Try and take it into the top left and kind of run around the table. Shot to nothing. Get away from that red. Ooh, just unfortunately cannon into that brown. But she's left Mink a little tight to that cushion. This is wonderful. This makes it look easy, huh? She does. But maybe, maybe that's what we need. You know, we need people to make it look easy because then everyone will go and pick up a cue and then they'll be like, wait a minute, it's not that hard. But I think it's one of those games like golf, you know, you're always challenging yourself to be better. There's always that one shot that you could make better mm -hmm. and that just keeps bringing you back. I think once uh, Snooker 
you know, puts its tentacles into you, it uh, doesn't let you go. That's for sure. Perfect on the pink here. It's going to clear up these two reds on the right. And interested to see how she's going to address the red on the left long long rail. Oh, did she block up the pink there? Yeah. Might have to spot up by the blue. Okay, the blue spot. Referee Daly taking a look. Oh, no, it does go. Oh, he's checking it. I don't think it does. 15. Oh, it does. Uh, gotta have nerves of steel to be a referee when you're uh, respotting those balls. Have no fear. 16. Don't fear the daily. We'll have to, give, we'll have to tell him about that one next time. I like it. <laughs> Don't fear the daily. <laughs> so this one's getting close to the uh, conclusion of this match. Just to let you know, our next match on the TV table will be the inaugural U.S. Open champion Jamie Hunter battling it out against Seattle's own Jocelyn Liu, and that will be going down at 2.30 Pacific Daylight Time. So definitely, and there's uh, a concession there. There's handshakes there. Great match there by Mar Mink. Marissa, don't beat yourself up too much. You're playing a world-class opponent there, so I hope you learned a lot. Always great to see Marissa coming back at the table and fighting hard. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, it's about 1.30 on the West Coast now. Come back at 2.30 to watch the defending champion, Jamie Hunter, trying to get that championship for a second time. All right, confirming that we will be back at 2.30 p.m., so make sure you like, subscribe, so you get the notification. We're going to be going live in about an hour, 50 minutes or so. Get a little lunch break for the last match of the day. Should be a good one. We'll be back. See you folks in a bit.